what's going on, y'all? Hopefully everything is going good on your side. Um, we're going to get into Rikers Island today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the screen. Um, well, even before that, just to give a little background, because obviously I know I worked in Rikers for a bit. Um, right now the island basically is comprised of about 10,000 plus people on it. That's just the people that are detained. Um, then you got the employees, which make up another 10 plus thousand people on the island. If you want to compare Rikers Island to an actual city, um, it's estimated that the island is about the same size as the city of Hoboken over in Jersey. So you are ready. Um, in regards to the nature of the island, so this is literally a land mass, literally an island. Um, that's right off the coast of East Elmhurst, which is in Queens. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, not far from, from City Field where the Mets play. And literally it's across from LaGuardia Airport. Like, they're like right across from each other, literally. Um, like if you're gonna go to LaGuardia, you, you literally, you're literally gonna be within minutes of Rikers Island, like a couple of minutes. So, um, the island is a landmass that holds 10, facil 10 plus facilities on it. Um, there's only one facility for women on it. There was one facility for juveniles, and the rest are basically for men. Now, Vikers is literally just a jail. So although it has a notorious reputation to it, um, it's not a prison, right? Prison is basically once you're sentenced already, you're you know doing time for a felony offense, which is usually a year or more. Um, where jail is usually a year or less. And it just so happens to be that the jails are on the island in this specific case. Now, to get into Rikers Island, um, and I suggest that you watch the videos and the links that, that I provided you as well. But to get into Rikers Island, uh, you literally have to go through a bridge that is very narrow. Um, it's about a five minute drive from start to finish. Um, for you to go over the bridge. And you have to have clearance in order to go over the bridge. A lot of people, if they don't work on the island, they literally just get on the bus. You know, they park their car somewhere near, and then they get on the bus that stops right before the island. Um, Rikers, you know, has been known for different situations. Little Wayne was locked up at Rikers Island. Uh, Tupac was in there at some point. Um, Bobby Schmurter was in there, um, Khalif Browder, you know, we, we know about his story. And basically anybody that gets locked up in the New York City area for the most part, or in a lot of cases, ends up going to Rikers Island. Um, and so the reputation that Rikers has, has been around for a while. Rikers, the way that we know it now, wasn't developed until the early 1900s. Um, basically Rikers uh, is a literal landmass of just waste, okay? So that's one thing that people don't know because now they're talking about closing down Rikers, but they're talking about closing it down, but what are you gonna do with an island that no longer has anything on it? Well, that's the question because the actual landmass itself, um, the soil, all that stuff is faulty. Um, it's not even really soil, it's basically waste and refuse that has been compounded throughout the years on that land mass to make it the mass that it is. Because originally the island was a lot smaller, uh, but people who were incarcerated in the early 1900s in New York, they actually went in Roosevelt Island first, and then they basically got moved over to Rikers Island. They, they bought it off the, uh, the Riken family, the, the city boarded off the Riken family, that island, and basically moved the prisoners or the incarcerated individuals over to that island, but they moved them over there with refuse and waste, basically garbage dump, right? And so they, they got moved over with that and they started taking that refuse and started piling it up on top of the island. Now, when you bring garbage anywhere, what's gonna follow? rats, infestations of them, right? And so what ended up happening was 
there was so many rats getting on the island that um, they had to actually bring dogs onto the island to eat the rats. So like the diet of these dogs literally was just rats. They weren't fed anything else so that they could specifically just eat the rats. And so that was just one issue. Um, one of the other issues was, of course, you have um, with the decaying of garbage and waste and stuff like that, you have gases that are coming out of it, right? So imagine the stuff that's under the soil that's decaying and that's deteriorating. The gases are trying to make their way up through, through the soil from underneath and burst up top. And so it's an accumulation. And so there were accounts, there were early accounts of cases where um, while this was happening, once the burst came out, that it would be like a blend of flames with with the with the gases and stuff like that. Um, somebody said that walking through the eye the island at one point, it looked like a whole bunch of little mini volcanoes, you know, in the walkway. And so Rikers Island, if you even just drive by the area, it just stinks. Like it's like one of the smelliest places that I've ever been around. Um, me being from Queens originally, I used to play at the baseball field that's right next to Rikers Island. And when I was like, I remember being a kid and, and still and asking the question like, yo, why does it stink over here? Like, why does it smell so bad? And somebody told me it was because there was a body of water. <laughs> I'm like, what? Well, I, I'm like, all right, whatever. I just took that. But obviously, almost two decades later, I, I ended up uh, working in this facility, working on this island, and it all obviously makes sense. I'm like, wow. The island literally stinks because it's literal garbage that makes up this island. So, you know, you could spend a good amount of time driving around the island. I used to go in and, um, you know, because I would have a gate, a gate one pass, which is a pass that allows you to just go straight into the island. Um, all you do is just show your ID and show that you got the pass and you can just drive in there. Um, but it would take, it would take like, like from one side of the island to the other, you could drive. 20, 30 minutes nonstop. It's a pretty big island. Um, I worked in the largest facility on the island. It was called AMKC and the M Crawl Center. Um, that facility was 40 acres. That facility was half general population, half mental observation. Um, basically, DOC acknowledges that there are people that are on the island that probably shouldn't be on the island. In my opinion, they shouldn't be on the island. They should be seeking um, mental health counseling or therapy or, you know, be hospitalized. But because that's just how the criminal justice system is, um, it locks up the homeless. It locks up those who may be suffering from some physical illness, but because they're black or because they're brown, they're not given the same level of um, health care or attention to their health as somebody who will come from the white community. And so that's just the reality of it. When you step into Rikers Island, the majority of people overwhelmingly are black or Hispanic or somebody from the minority group. Um, the reality is that New York City is not just black and Hispanic, um, but that's just what the Rikers, uh, what the island is primarily made up of. Even the name Rikers Island, right? And I learned this after I had to work there. Like the majority of people that work in the island, they don't even notice about the island, right? They, they spent 20, 30 years working there trying to collect the pension. They don't even know because it's not something that's broadcasted like that. But the name uh, Rikers Island is named after Richard Riker, who was a judge um, who the North and the South had an agreement um, through this act called the Fugitive Slave Act, that if there was a runaway slave from down south that made their way up north and they were found to be a runaway, um, the north had the obligation to return them back to the south. And that was already an agreement. Now, it's another thing for somebody who's black in the north to be free in the north, to be born free, and then basically get extradited down to the south and get pulled down to the south. That's what Richard Riker was doing. He was a judge, and basically he would get bribed and kickbacks 
and, and get kickbacks from um from bounty hunters, literally just like twelve years a slave. If you want to equate this to like a a movie or something, twelve years a slave is literally the best example of what was happening. Um, bounty hunters from down south would go up north, you know, because New York, New Jersey, both had slavery. Um, at one point, um, New York was actually the second, the the state with the second highest amount of, of slaves at one point, okay? And New Jersey was actually the last state to abolish slavery in the North. And so slavery is not just, it wasn't just a Southern thing. It was a thing up in the North, but even though the North did away with it, because economically they could have survived you know, through through um, the Industrial Revolution and things of that nature, they still didn't necessarily care about freeing black folk, right? So it wasn't it wasn't in their interest. But um, Richard Riker, he basically profited off of this economy. Still, he um, he extradited the process of you know, sending slaves or, or sending free black men who were never slaves at any point in their life down south uh, because they were, he was getting kickbacks and stuff like that. Um, and this is literally who Rikers Island is named after. And so it kind of just shows you the overtly <laughs> racist history of was happening here, you know what I'm saying? So this island is named after this judge who was supporting slavery. Um, like, th this is who the island is named after and the majority of people on the island are black or brown. So I don't believe that any of this is coincidental, you know what I'm saying? But obviously everybody needs to form their own perspective on things. Um, but I'm just giving you the angle, especially having worked in there, it's like, it only makes sense. Um, the other side of it is that you also have um, people that work on the island and then people that work in headquarters. Now, when people think of the Department of Corrections and they think of Rikers Island, they don't think that, like, like they only think it's just Rikers Island, but they don't think that there's a headquarters. They don't think that there's a nice, fancy looking place, you know, where people go to and have organized meetings and things of that nature, they probably just think, oh, everything just happens on the island. No, it's the headquarters and the island are literally within five minutes of each other driving. And headquarters is like something you would, like, it's it's like a mall. Like, it's in the boulevard uh, building. I'm going to share the screen with you real quick. All right, so I'm just waiting for this thing to go away on the top. Um, all right, it's trying to bug it. So this is this is the image of the Boulevard building. This is located out in East Elmhurst, Queens. And this is the inside of it. This is where the Department of Corrections headquarters is located. In here, there's a cafeteria. They got a gym in here. You know what I'm saying? Like, it looks like a mall. For real, for real. Now, you won't compare that to Rikers Island. Rikers Island. Shout out to Cool G Rap. You know what I'm saying? It's literally a prison industry complex. And just look at the um the architecture of it, like how it looks like X's and stuff like that. If you look over the top of project buildings, you know what I'm saying? Like it looks just like that. For example, if you put 
Queens Bridge. This is where um this is where Nas is from. Nas Mob D. I'm saying some of the greatest rappers ever. Queens Bridge is the is the largest housing complex in the United States. And just having like an overhead view of it. It's a, it's a similar design, you know what I'm saying? So like when people want to minimize the intentionality of the prison industry complex, I mean, certain things like this, it kind of just makes it obvious like this is not accidental because you don't accidentally have similar looking designs and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? Like this is to get people acclimated and familiarize with certain behaviors and patterns, whether they know it or not. And that's just the reality of it. Now, it's an unfortunate reality, but it's reality. And so, Rikers has these different facilities. I'm gonna run through them real quick. It has uh, Benjamin Ward Visit Center. That's where you go for visits and stuff like that. It has RNDC that opened in 1972. Um, GMDC opened in 1971, but GMDC just closed in 2018 and is no longer used to house people in custody, so that's pretty recent. Um, probably part of the plan to close down Rikers. EMTC um, opened in 1964, renamed late in 2000. AMKC, that's where I was at, opened in 1978, and the facility spreads over 40 acres. Rose M. Singer, that's the woman facility. It opened in 1988. It holds just about 300 women, 300 plus women, so it's not really a lot because it's a population of over 10,000 people on the island. And you're, in a, you're not even talking about the facilities that exist in the, in the community, so we'll talk about that a little bit. OBCC, they call that facility Old Boy, opened up in, in 1985. Um, NIC, GRVC, um, and the other two, it kind of just outliers. These are the ones in the, in the boroughs uh, that you can literally find in the city. You have BKDC, um, that's located off right off Atlantic Ave. It's like five minutes from the Barclays Center. Um, that one is probably one of the worst facilities because slashings happen pretty often. Um, lockdowns happen almost every day and they last almost like a whole day. A lockdown in AMKC on average would last like 30, 30 minutes to an hour, where in BKDC you would literally spend the whole day being on lockdown. So uh, it was pretty bad. And um, MDC, Manhattan Detention Complex, that's the facility right off Canal Street. Uh, they actually call that the Tombs. So you're all ready. BCBC, that's out in the BX, in the Bronx. It's literally a boat that's anchored onto, it's, it's anchored onto the, uh, the shore, or onto the dock. So uh, I'm not sure why it's, again, giving me hard time. Uh, but you can see this is literally a boat. It's anchored against, I'm saying the dock. Why they made it a boat and not a building, I am not sure if it's going to be anchored like that. Um, on the top, you can see that there's a little, I'm saying, wreck area that they basically play. Uh, you know, the sports and get their free time outside of, on top of the of the boat. Kind of like some of the high schools nowadays, like Union City High School has that, you know what I'm saying, that design, but obviously this is not fun for a lot of dudes. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of just like a general overview of Rikers. Um, I just wanted to break that down for you real quick because when we're talking criminal justice, like I feel like Rikers has to be talked about and especially 
the racial component that exists in it. Um, you got all types of individuals there, low risk offenders, high risk offenders, uh, people who are in there for rape, people that are in there for murder, selling drugs, all that. And at the end of the day, it's just a holding facility. You know what I'm saying? So like, you're not you're not guilty yet. So you ju you're just waiting your trial. You're waiting for um. You're waiting for basically the opportunity to fight your case, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and at the end, it's like it can just continue to get delayed, and all you're gonna do is spend more time inside of this island. So what a lot of people end up doing is you just cop out. You know what I'm saying? Like they take they take the best deal that they could take because getting home sooner is more important than being innocent in the long run. Because of course, look at what happened with Khalid Browder in the sense that he stuck around for three years in the island that he didn't even commit the crime and like the damage they mentally, emotionally, physically that he experienced was so great that it led to him feeling like he needed to take his own life. And so a lot of people can't, you know, do this, you know, like to me, even having worked in there, like, yo, I don't care how tough you are, like, we're not built to go through this kind of stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're not supposed to go through this kind of stuff, but people just find ways to do it because they have to, but it's not that you want to. Like, I seen a dude in there one time that I don't even know how he was alive, to be quite honest. Like, this dude had, in, in Rikers, when somebody gets slashed, like, from the ear to the chin, you call that a buck fifty because you get 150 stitches for it, right? Like, it's, it's bad. And then you get the scar forever. Some people say, oh, I'm going to make you smile forever. Like, there's just, like, a whole bunch of just crazy ways of saying different things in, 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 I'm saying in jail or whatever. I've seen this one dude, he had literally a scar that started in the front of his neck and went literally all around his neck, back up to the start of his neck. I'm like, like even my captain who worked there for like almost 30 years was like, yo, how is this guy alive right now? Like, I've never seen nothing like that. Like even in the streets, like I've never, like I've seen dudes with slashes on their face and scars and stuff like that, but I've never seen somebody look like somebody attempted to decapitate them, like literally. You know what I'm saying? Like this is the kind of stuff you see on the island and this honestly is normal. <laughs> like it's crazy that, I, that I'm saying it like that, but this is normal. And you know what I'm saying? This is not a place of rehabilitation. It's not a place of, you know, improving yourself. Like you actually just come out being a worse, you know, criminal basically. Like you learn how to do, like a better criminal I should say. Like you learn how to do crime better. And if anything, you get plugged into other outlets and et cetera, et cetera. So um, these are things to consider. Um, and of course, if you plan on working in, in this facility, you just have to weigh your options because it's a high stress environment. Um, and a lot of times you think that the stress is just gonna be from, from the people who are incarcerated, but that might actually be the easier part. You have to deal with the dynamic of, you know, working with coworkers who, you know what I'm saying? You, you need them to be on their P's and Q's just as much as anybody because they, they got your back, right? But sometimes it's, it's never it's never like that. So, um, and then the last thing in, um, in the headquarters, you have basically like the program people, the people that do policy who, you know, the commissioners, the, um, the chiefs, executive directors, people that are in suits and ties and stuff like that, right? Civilians. And then on the island, you've got people who are in uniform, the correctional officers, captains, wardens, deputy, deputy wardens, um, and the majority on the island are people of color, but then the people that are in the headquarters are predominantly white. And so you kind of see the differentiation right there as well as to like, you know, who's in the front lines and who's behind the computer desk, you know, logging stuff in into Excel spreadsheets or having meetings with you know, city hall and stuff like that. So that's his own dynamic. But anyways, hope this was informative. If you have any questions, reach out to me, of course. Um, in the meantime, stay safe and enjoy yourself.